In this lecture, we're going to study the Le Chatelier principle, and now we're going to study the effect of change in <coughs> in pressure. Now, now when you uh, uh, what uh, what we st uh, stated earlier was that uh, the Le Chatelier principle basically counters any change that is introduced in, into the system. So if we uh, let's revise that, recall that. So if I if I increase pressure. then uh, the the dynamic equilibrium would try to equilibrium would try and decrease pressure tries to decrease pressure vice versa if i try to decrease pressure then your equilibrium is going to try it's going to try it's it's going to try to increase pressure so uh, basically it does the opposite now we're going to try and understand why it does that why would it uh, if we increase pressure, why would the equilibrium try to decrease pressure? Now, one uh, example, one everyday example, let's think of an everyday example and we will uh, study that example first. Uh, let's say we have a bottle of Coke. Now, uh, let me move the page a little further up. Okay, now if I have a bottle of Coke, let's say I have this, uh, I'm drawing a bottle. Uh, And it's uh, let's say it's a it's a carbonated drink and a fizzy drink that you buy from your uh, from your everyday shop that you drink regularly. So this this over here is my Coke bottle, and in that Coke bottle I have uh, some fizzy drink now. Uh, you would need to know this. Uh, this is a very important fact that fizzy drinks have dissolved carbon dioxide. So at very high pressure, what they do is that at very high pressure, carbon dioxide is it 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 dissolves in the water that is present in the carbonated in in the drink, and it forms uh, carbonic acid H two CO three. But this only happens at extremely high high pressure. So, so at high pressures, let me correct this. So at high, pressures, uh, your carbon dioxide is going to dissolve in the water and it's going to produce H2. CO3. Vice versa, when you open a fizzy drink, especially after shaking it, then that carbon dioxide uh, quickly undissolves. It it does the reverse. The reverse reaction happens. It does the reverse, and you see all these bubbles of carbon dioxide gas being produced. These bubbles are formed as carbon dioxide is being released. So, so when you decrease pressure, when you open the can, and when you open the can, you're basically decreasing pressure. So at low pressure. Those bubbles are formed in the fizzy drink when you open the open the cap. So let's say I have a cap over here, and instead of a cap, I have I have a piston over here. Now what I'm going to do is, let's say I start pressing this piston. When I start pressing this piston, whenever you compress something. You're basically increasing pressure so I'm what I'm doing is I'm compressing it I am compressing this container which means I am increasing pressure now one thing you'll notice is when you increase when you increase pressure uh, your volume decreases 
So there's uh, there's lesser volume now. So there's definitely lesser volume. If you increase pressure, your volume decreases. Now you would need to understand this is uh, we have two sides over here. One is this side, carbon dioxide plus H2, and the other side is H2, CO3. Now, as your volume decreases, you're squeezing, you're squeezing the volume. So as your volume decreases, uh, let's go get back over here. Uh, so my volume is now decreasing. So, so this side, CO2 is a gas. Whereas H2O is a liquid and H2CO3 is also in aqueous state. It's in the solution. Now, uh, this side occupies a larger volume because it is a gas. You have CO2 gas over here. So this side requires, requires a larger volume. Whereas this side requires lesser volume because uh, it's in aqueous state, in liquid state. The particles are close together, whereas in gaseous state, especially in, we're talking about CO2 when we talk about gaseous state, the particles are far apart. So as you are squeezing this container, you're compressing it, then it would be very difficult for us to, uh, it would be very difficult for us to actually, uh, it would be very difficult for CO2 and H2O to form because uh, they're going to occupy a larger volume so they would form there wouldn't be any space to accommodate the co2 and h2o so so the forward reaction would speed up because your volume is decreasing the lesser volume side would be favored because you have less volume your volume is decreasing so as your volume decreases uh, the larger volume side can no longer be accommodated. It would be very hard to actually form CO2 and H2 because there wouldn't be any space for it. But it would be easier to form H2CO3 because H2CO3 occupies a smaller volume. And since you have a smaller volume, more H2CO3 would be produced. So in a way, when you, uh, when you, we can, we can write a point down now is, the point is, when you increase pressure, So when you increase pressure, you compress, which means that you are decreasing, decreasing volume. And since you're decreasing volume, then that side, which occupies a lesser volume, that side is favor. That would, it would be easier to form H2CO3 compared to CO2 and H2O. So your lesser volume side. volume side is is favored so lesser volume side is favored and uh, and we will treat this as our rule which is this rule would be dealt with when you uh, when you change pressure. So this is the rule. When you increase pressure, lesser volume side is always favored. Vice versa. Vice versa, if I, if I decrease pressure, so when I decrease pressure, for example, if I open the Coke bottle, then I'm decreasing pressure. Uh, all of a sudden, you will you will have more volume. Your volume increases if you decrease pressure. You decompress. So, uh, so which means you're increasing volume when you are decreasing pressure. So, since you have more volume, more volume side, it would be easier to form uh, those reactants or products which occupy more volume which in the above case is CO2 gas. So more volume side is favored. Is favored. Which in the above case, in the fizzy drink case, uh, you'll get more CO2 gas 
uh, when you open the cap of the bottle. Now let's do another example of increase or decrease in pressure and let's talk about the same uh, equilibrium reaction that we studied initially when we were dealing with uh, with increase or decrease in temperature that reaction was evaporation and condensation so you have H2O liquid and those liquid particles they gain energy and they form H2O gas which is steam and vice versa those H2O gas molecules will lose energy and they will form H2O liquid back again so this is a reversible reaction that's happening and let's say we have a container here's our container and it has a movable it has a movable piston so it's got a movable piston on top This is to ensure that uh, we can increase or decrease. We can increase or decrease pressure when we want it to change. So uh, this is my container and it has a movable piston. I can increase pressure by decreasing volume by compressing it. I can decrease pressure by increasing volume or decompressing it so i have liquid molecules of water in this and these molecules are all they all close together because they're in liquid state there would be there would be some tiny distances between them uh, they are freely moving around in liquid state so these molecules can evaporate and they can form steam in which the particles are very far apart and they are energetic Vice versa, those steam molecules can compress, uh, can uh, sorry, uh, can condense, and they can form liquid water back again. Now this process is going on. What is going to happen if I if I uh, take this piston and I start compressing this? If I start moving the piston downwards, what's going to happen is that there would be lesser space available since you you're, you're uh, compressing this. Whenever you're going to compress this, you're basically decreasing volume. And since you're decreasing volume, that means you're increasing pressure. So basically when you're compressing, you are increasing pressure. So our pressure has now increased. So when you increase pressure, let's say the piston is now somewhere over here. I have compressed it, I have moved the piston down and the new position for the piston is somewhere over here. Since I'm compressing it, there's uh, less space available for steam now. and there is lesser space available which means that not a lot of steam can now be produced so there would be less steam producing because it occupies uh, steam occupies a larger volume the particles are steam requires a larger volume the particles are far apart whereas h2 liquid the particles are close together so it requires a lesser volume so whenever you increase pressure uh, there's lesser volume which means the lesser volume side would be favored because lesser volume side which is this this side which is H2 a liquid is favored and the reason is that you you H2O gas would have a lot of space so there wouldn't be any space available for H2O gas to form so H2O gas or steam it would be very difficult for steam to form so there would be less steam and there would be more h2o liquid so what we're going to write is let's uh, write that down in red we're going to say that the lesser volume side is favored and equilibrium
favor is H2O liquid. Backward reaction would speed up. So our backward reaction speeds up. And uh, equilibrium, we, we're going to write that equilibrium shifts to the left. Equilibrium shifts to the left. So these are the things that we're going to write about this equilibrium. So whenever you increase pressure, lesser volume side is going to be favored, which in this case is H2O liquid. A third example of increase or decrease in pressure uh, and the effect on equilibrium uh, deals with the following equation, which is uh, you have a molecule of NOCl and it is gaseous and it is uh, there's a reversible reaction going on and it's forming NO and Cl2 and vice versa these are decomposing to form NOCl back again these are uh, combining to form NOCl back again so I'm going to balance this equation there will be two NOCl and there would be two molecules of NO so this is the reversible reaction these are also gaseous products so if I increase pressure in this case let's say this these all these molecules apart are placed in a container and I'm compressing that container so if I if I increase increase pressure uh, which means I'm compressing it your volume would decrease and since the volume is decreasing uh, the more volume side cannot be favored because there's lesser volume now so uh, the less volume side would be favored So lesser volume side is, is favored. Now which side is the lesser volume side? In this case, all the molecules are, are gaseous. So since they, they're all, they're all uh, gaseous, uh, we ca we'll count the number of moles. On this, on this side, on the left hand side, you only have, you only have two moles. And on your right hand side, you have a total of, you have two moles of NO and you have one mole of Cl2, which means that you have a total of three moles. Now three moles, if three moles are produced, then they would occupy a larger volume. So the right hand side tends to occupy a larger volume, whereas the left hand side says there are two moles, they would occupy a smaller volume. So a lesser volume would be occupied by the left hand side so since the left hand side is the lesser volume side so if you if you increase pressure and volume decreases since you're compressing lesser volume side is favored which is the left hand side so your backward reaction your backward reaction speeds up so that more NOCl can be produced since they are going to occupy a lesser volume and we are going to write down that the equilibrium shifts of favors equilibrium shifts of favors the left hand side Vice versa, if I decrease pressure, which means that I'm increasing volume, so the more volume side would be favored. So if I if I decrease pressure, the larger volume side would be favored, it would, and your answer would be the opposite of what I've written over here, which is that more volume side would be favored, the forward reaction would speed up, and equilibrium would shift of favor the right-hand side.